As always, Mato is back. So much sport to talk about. Let's start where we're going to be at three in the morning. So you and me are going out for a beer tonight with our families. at somebody's birthday. Yep. We're going to celebrate. At three in the morning, we're going yep. to spill out of a nightclub, Greg. We're going to start a play fight and a play wrestle. But it's only a play fight and a play wrestle at three in the morning. Can you believe these goons, Whiten and Latrell? Should I really comment? Because that was my life for about eight years. Um, and we did a lot of play wrestling. I remember the night we fell out of a car when it was doing 60 because we were wrestling. Actually, it was in Dunedin on a Wallaby tour. If there were cameras, I feel sorry for these blokes almost because this is just, I'm big and strong. Do you want to wrestle? Yeah, mate, no worries. No one else got hurt. I sort of, I know they're idiots, but I feel sorry for them. The police were over, over, uh, overactive that evening, don't you reckon? Well, hang on a second. I mean, I, I don't feel sorry for the fact that their brains are smaller than most other people's on the planet. I don't. I, I don't feel sorry for that bit of it. It's just very simple to me. Look, it, it might be innocent. I doubt that it was because Whiten's had form before, but it might be innocent. I'll, I'll cut them that. But the fact is, you're still morons. You know what the consequence are. You know that people are filming it. You know that you're going to get front yeah, page yeah. headlines. You know all of this. And you still go and do it. You've had lectures about it. You've been warned. You've been told. And still you're out at 4 a.m. Ha- what happens after midnight if you're out? Nothing good. And oh. nothing good happened again. But it's, it's, when, when do they have? They have one weekend. It must be in three weeks. They start in three weeks' time. So in two weeks' time, they all have a weekend off. That'll be the big arrest weekend where they all go out for one last blast off. And they all get arrested. I love that weekend. Well, you've got to look. You've got to love the. I applaud it. I've decided to embrace it this year, rather than actually getting on my high horse about it. I just accept it now. There is a percentage of players in the NRL whose brains are slightly, well, I wasn't going to say smaller than the rest of us because I don't actually know whether you could define that small p as a brain. But the fact is, is that that's who they are as people, and they. It doesn't matter how yeah, many right. times you say it, they're still going to do it. The NRL has to accept it. Well, they say things like, oh, you shouldn't smoke marijuana before you're, what, 25 or whatever because your brain hasn't developed. Now, their brain especially hasn't developed because they started to get patted, and, and maybe this happens in rugby as well, they started to get patted on the back from the age of 14 and told, you're going to make it, you're going to be a big-time footy star. You don't need to worry about school. So their brain may not have been big enough to start with, but it never got any bigger because they never, they never studied anything apart from the contact zone. So... We have idiots, but that's what we love. We love yeah, watching idiots yeah. run into each that's other it. at yeah. high speed. Yes. And and that's that's fabulous. And if they have to do it late at night, that's fabulous too. I'd boys like to tell boys or something. I'd like, like to tell a little story about a good mate of mine. His name was Tim Horan. We were coming back from a test match. It might have been Dunedin a game on tour or something. We decided to start throwing rocks on the ceilings of houses. It was in Omaru. Omaru it was. You see this is <laughs> The great thing about it, Greg, is we can sit there and we can judge and we can tell off and we can be thankful there weren't goddamn cell phones around when we were that age, mate. And can you imagine there would have been some two blokes on talkback radio going, what about that Horn and Martin bloke rocking houses in Omaru last night? I'm glad they got arrested. We should kill them. That's what would have happened these days if we... Imagine if there was people rocked roofs now. God. I was watching last night uh, at the Indian Australia Cricket t- Test Series because this is this oh, is this is heaven. Cheaters, this cheaters, is this is cheaters. like watching England lose at rugby. There's something joyous about every time the Australian cricket team gets absolutely pink. <laughs> and mate, and oh. Steve Smith. Now this man's Test batting average is sixty point something, thirty Test centuries. Yes, I know. He got bowled last night. I mean, the world stopped for two minutes. Did you see the look on his face? He actually looked as though somebody just said, "You need to actually wear a dress, make up high heels, finger." And I was painted and identify as a woman. He looked so perplexed afterwards. He didn't have a clue what happened. He kept staring forward and then suddenly looked backwards and the stumps mm. weren't there. It was just weird. Well, how dare you? I'm Steve Smith. How dare you get me out? What? What? Who? What? No, hold on. Stop. It's a wonder he didn't review it. Um, I just want. They, they, it's horrible what happened over there. They doctor, do you do you understand the proper story of what happened over there? Oh look, the I saw. That. I don't know what you're going on about, mate. There was grass on the pitch what do you here. Mean there you was don't a know bit of thing. Go, okay, go. so I mean, this is what happens. Sometimes you clean that bit of carpet a little more than you clean that bit of carpet. It's just come on. Oh, you're not bad, are you? Hold on. They particularly, they deliberately doctor the pitch. We've got. They know we've got six left-handed batsmen. They've only got two, so they doctor outside the off stump of a left-hander 
That's cheating. I want to call it for what okay, it is. Mr. It's clear case of cheating. The underarm, the mental disintegration, the sandpaper. So I kind of think your argument falls over early on this one. The all black coaching we're, thing, we're mate. Do you, re though. Greg? Do you care? I mean, this is look. We've just appointed the new Black Ferns coach today. It was a really easy process. Alan Bunting, best candidate, rubber stamp him in the job, announce it done. Yet the rugby union, I mean, they faff and fanny about, trip over themselves, deny everything, say nothing's going on. Razor's already spoken out. I mean, it is just like watching an episode of Faulty Towers. Hold on, what's happening? Where is Razor at? Has he had a press conference or anything? Somebody tried to tell me he said buller at the press conference. Is he coaching Fiji? Well, he's just, he's throwing it out there because he knows that every word out of his mouth is going to be front page yeah. news. What he did was he I'll usurped, the, yeah, he usurped the union and he said, oh no, announcement's coming in two weeks. And they, he was asked, what well, do you know what's going on? I know what's going on. Within an hour, because they were launching Super Rugby Opiki, the women's comp at that time, the CEO puts out a one-line statement, oh, we no, no, nothing's going, we don't know, no, absolutely not, we didn't know. That. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We dream about getting that sort of coverage for rugby over here. Oh, gosh, that's good. The Six Nations, mate, did you watch any of it? Oh, just highlights, mate. I can't watch the whole... We've got, you know... You know what I've perfected over the years is the super fast forward. If you know what, I don't know if your pay TV channel is Sky over there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If do they do minis of games like cut them down to twelve minutes for you? No, they look no. I mean, because they would actually be offering something to the customers other than a finger in the face. No, they would. There's no way that they'd be treating us like that. I mean, there's, there's no way that they would do that, mate. I mean, you know. But what they do offer is they do offer a service on the on the remote where you can actually uh, two times it, four times it, six times it, twelve times it, or yeah. whatever. It's a great way to watch a game of rugby because yeah, that's what you do. You just go from scrum scrum set to scrum set. Well, I, I avoid line outs and scrums and restarts and things like that and just go, oh, someone scored there. I better have a look at that. Um, just same old, same old, mate. France and Ireland doing their World Cup final. Is that what we're looking at? Well, I mean, you're looking at your side of the draw. Uh, Wales, of course, you know, I mean, they, they look absolutely shot to bits, don't they? So you're going to have to beat them if you but beat them. But you wouldn't know. We could lose to Wales in our pool. Oh, stop forget. it, mate. Please stop it. No, 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 no. Yes. Come on. England. Hold on, our last start. Don't forget our last start is a loss to Italy. That's the base we're coming on. England lost to Scotland, and apart from everyone else in the world that loves rugby who was laughing, do you reckon that a guy called Eddie Jones was just on the floor holding his sides together, crying tears of oh. joy? Of course he is, mate. Hey, we're still ringing a bit out. Like, he's still making the news here in Australia. You know, I always say, no one wants to talk rugby. Rugby has been front and centre. Eddie has been in the news, uh, I reckon, twice a week since he got wow. appointed three weeks ago. So it's working. That part of it's working, the marketing side. All right, OK. Well, OK. But, I mean, then, of course, there is putting the jerseys on, getting a piece of leather running around a field covered in grass, scoring yeah, more points than the opposition. That's the hard bit. OK. Yeah, that's OK, <laughs> but that's time will come. Hey, listen, who won the other? Oh, so France looked all right and Ireland looked all right. So Six Nations, steady as she goes. Did it say, say anything to you? It just said to me that I think that, you know, France, there's always going to be a question mark about them, whatever happens. They're hosting a World Cup, which is probably the worst thing for them, because if they weren't hosting it and everyone had written them off, then they'd be dangerous. I think that the more favourites you make them, the better it is for the rest of us. I think that that's clear. And this Ireland team, they just look consistent, and that's scary, isn't it? Because we always sort of think, oh, eventually they'll stumble, fall, or they'll get pissed, it'll be a lot of crack, and they'll have a great time, and they won't take it seriously. But this team looks as though they're the opposite of that for the first time ever. Exactly, mate. They look like they look like the most professional team running around at the moment, and, and you guys know that they're playing bloody good footy. So, in terms of serious footy chat, the Irish look like the best things to come out of Europe, and you guys are the best in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, we'd argue that maybe South Africa might be, but let's. All right, we're going to finish on. Do you care about the Super Bowl? Do you ever watch that? Does your audience like it? Um, well, the thing is, I'll finish work on Monday at 9am and it starts about half an hour later, so it's perfect timing for a breakfast radio guy. Um, I think I'm booked in for buffalo wings and beer at yes. about 9.15 Monday, so things are looking good. We've got a we've got an Aussie bloke, so if all you guys... Well, he's Jordan Maialata. Maialata. He's the... When, when the Philadelphia Eagles, when their quarterback's got the ball, on just on his left shoulder will be a six foot seven, one hundred and seventy kilogram kitty from Sydney. He's Samoan, um, Samoan Australian. He is the human bollard that stops anyone tackling the quarterback for the Eagles. So 
keep an eye on that. And there's a um, so there is an Aussie element. So that's uh, most of Australia will be going for the Eagles based on that one human being. 170 kilograms and six foot seven. He was too big to play rugby league.